Hello and welcome to the 23rd lecture in this series. Now, last time I introduced submanifolds and let us continue with uh, studying them. To recall, we had an n manifold. So, we had k dimensional submanifold. we had an n manifold and a subset S. We said that S is a k dimensional submanifold if every point in S is contained in a special kind of chart on M. The special chart which we called uh, a slice chart, well the what is special about this? It is just that as, uh, as uh, I mean of course, if this is u, phi of u will be some, phi of u is some open subset of R n, but the slice chart property is that the intersection with S. should go to phi of u intersection S should be contained in R k and it should be open. So, two things phi of u is open in R k. in a lower dimensional subspace. The moment one has, uh, if every point of S is contained in <coughs> some such chart, we saw that we could give a smooth structure on S and make S itself into a k dimensional submanifold. But it is something more than it is uh, much more special than just saying that S is a k dimensional submanifold. As I said, it should be naturally related to the structure on M and the definition makes it clear. After all, we are getting the charts on S just by starting with charts on M. So, let us see some easy consequences of this definition. First thing is that properties If I look at the inclusion map i from S to M, then this map is smooth and in fact an immersion. So, this is uh, <coughs> again to check that this is smooth, we just go back to our definition of smoothness and the differentiable structure and the atlas on S. So, it is almost a direct consequence of that. So, to say that suppose this is my submanifold S and this is being put inside. inclusion uh, goes back to itself. Now, to say that this map is smooth would mean that starting with any point here, I should be able to find a chart here about this and a chart on M such that the inclusion map in these charts should be a smooth map. Well, uh, the only charts we know on S are anyway these restrictions of slice charts. So, let us take some such chart. So, let us take a slice chart here. 
u phi and work with the same slice chart here as well. So, it is just that now it will be intersection phi restricted to u intersection s would be the new chart here. This would go to some open subset of uh, R k while this would go to an open subset of R n itself. So, this is phi of p and this is phi of p as well. So, essentially we are working with the same chart in the domain and image except that in the image the chart is defined on a much bigger set here we are defining it only on the on S. If you just compose the inclusion map we will just get so phi restricted to u intersection S the inverse of this composed with i composed with well again phi if I see what it does to x1 up to xk here it is immediately clear that after all all it is doing is x1 actually here the way I defined rk. So, let me put zeros it is just the identity map it's k 0 0 0. So, it is just uh, uh, it is just the identity map and of course, it is smooth and not only that the fact that uh, this is the identity map will immediately also imply that it is an immersion because as I said earlier the rank of a map the derivative of a map can be computed once we know what it looks like in local coordinates because in local coordinates we will be pre composing and post composing the map by some diffeomorphisms the, namely the chart maps and that does not change the rank. So, in local coordinates is just the identity therefore, it is uh, identity from R k to itself. So, therefore, its rank is k. Now, here is an important thing with uh, namely the tangent space. The good thing about submanifolds is that if p belongs to S, then T p S I have a map from T p S to T p M is uh, the derivative I already said that this is an immersion. So, it will follow that this is a uh, this map is injective. So, in short I can think of this the tangent space to S identify this with a certain subspace of T p m. But actually uh, in fact, one can be even more explicit than what I have written here. So, let us what we can do is. So, let in fact this T p s if I want to be more explicit. So, I want to see what exactly the image of this as a subspace is here is one can describe it very conveniently as follows d i p of t p s this is the subspace of t p m given by all derivations x in t p m such that x f equal to 0 
whenever f is a C infinity function on M with f restricted to S is identically 0. So, what I am doing is I am identifying a con coming up with a concrete subspace of the tangent space to the big manifold which happens to be the image of this tangent space to the submanifold image under this map DIP derivative of the inclusion. So, in practice we can think of TPS as a subspace of TPM given by this thing here. What I have here So, let us quickly see why this is the case, uh, how do we, why, why is the image like this. So, proof, well one way is clear. So, let V belong to T P S. Now, I want to see what D I P of V. This is supposed to be a derivation. So, remember that V is here and I want to get something here in T P M. So, this is supposed to be a derivation on C infinity M. So, it will act on a C infinity function f. So, let f belongs to C infinity m and the, according to the definition this is nothing but v of f composed with i. In other words, the restriction of f to the submanifold S. Now, f composed with i, the restriction map by hypothesis. So, if f restricted to S is identically 0, then V of f composed with i is 0. Since it is uh, in other words since uh, this f composed with i becomes the 0 function on S. So, v of any 0 function for that matter v of any constant function on S will be 0 because v is a tangent vector to S. It does not care about what the function is doing elsewhere in the manifold bigger manifold M. So, in other uh, so what we have shown is that this DIP of TPS hence DIP of TPS is contained in all those derivations which have the property that xf equal to 0 if f comma restricted to s is identically 0. The, so, the proof would be complete if one knows that this if everything here. So, we have shown that the image is contained in this uh, right hand side subspace of T P M, but now I want to say that anything which has this property is of the form conversely let V let x belong to let us call the subspace w belong to w. So, let me write it a bit more clearly. So, this subspace this uh, entire thing labeled it as w. So, let x belong to the subspace w. So, I want to say that 
want a V in TPS with DIP of V equal to X. And again, just working through the definitions will tell us how to find this V. So, we want this, i.e., this is the same thing as saying that DIP of V acting on any F equal to XF for all C infinity functions on M. Right, and this is the well, the left hand side again is the same as V of F composed with I equal to XF. So, at this point, we can uh, just figure out what V has to be. So, V of F restricted to the submanifold should be equal to X of F. So, this equation should actually in fact tell us precisely what V is just by plugging in various choices of F. So, now let U phi be a slice chart around P. So, we just transfer the picture So, the point P is somewhere here. So, I just transfer the picture to Euclidean space. And we know that in Euclidean space, we every tangent vector can be expressed in terms of a natural basis, namely the natural basis is just that is the one given by partial derivatives at that point. So, let us transfer. So, in other words, consider dx d phi p of x. So, we had a vector x here to begin with. This x we did not know that we would like to claim that any x in this uh, which is in the subspace w is actually tangent to this s. In other words, it should be tangent to this blue portion here, but we do not know that. So, let us just put it put an arrow here and make it look as if it is not tangent to that what I will do is I will push it here, I will get d phi p of x and get a vector here. And this property of uh, the subspace w, in fact, we can do that, we can push the subspace w here as well. This would correspond to saying that all functions, um, the corresponding subspace would be all those x acting on any f instead of S, I will be having the uh, this open subset of R k. So, if f restricted to th this open subset is 0, then x of f should be 0. Well, not quite x, it is this vector. Consider y equal to this. y has the property that y of y of f is 0 if f restricted to r k is identically 0. So, in other words, um, if whenever the last n minus k coordinates are 0, if the function happens to be 0, then the derivative of that function, this y action on that is also 0 is what we are saying. Yeah, as I was saying, 
so well, the whole point of moving to rn is that i can i have a natural basis uh, and in terms of which i can express uh, all derivations so let's do that now y equals a1 del by del x1 at this point so this point is some point q so q equals v of p plus so let's write the first k or k1 separately plus a k plus 1 a n del by del x n at q now the condition on y is that suppose i start with rather than writing this equation so let me write this suppose i start with a function which satisfies this condition f restricted to r k is identically zero it is the same thing as saying that f of so whenever the last n minus k coordinates so when i restrict x1 x k and if i put the last this is what restriction to r k means so when I, an expression of this form is identically zero so that's what we are told so if we start with any such function <coughs> then we are given the information that y of f is zero now we know lots of such functions f namely the projections on to the k plus first and so on coordinates so take f of x1 xn equal to xi where i lies between k plus 1 and n then we get just by hypothesis so y of f is 0 if and only if so i just plug in the i at x i here so i'll get a k a i is 0 where i lies between k plus 1 and n so in short what we have concluded is that any such y therefore y is actually of the form del a k del by del x k i e y is actually belongs to the tangent space at q of r k since it involves just so this was the statement about y well one can using the is isomorphism d phi p one concludes that x itself this right uh, yeah as i was saying this uh, we were ultimately looking for some the way i had put it we were looking for some v which was uh, of this form so one concludes so this y is what you would call as your v one concludes that if v equals dp p inverse of this y then essentially this original x then we have this equation 
that uh, action of x on f is the same thing as v of x f equal to v of f composed with i for any f n c infinity m. So, I will leave the skip the details, but the essential computation has been done here and it just involves going to uh, coordinates. Now, I have been promising a theorem which will generate lots of submanifolds. So, let me state that now. Regular value theorem. Let f from m n to m rather not m again some other manifold n m be smooth. Suppose that q in n is a regular value for f. So, regular value for f just means that i e d f p from t p m to t q n as is subjective for all p in f inverse q. So, this is f inverse q is called a level set of f. So, for all points in the level set, I demand that the derivative is surjective. In particular, this condition already implies that this m is less than or equal to n. And we have also seen that this condition of surjectivity earlier, where I talked about submersions. Uh, the way I defined a submersion, I demanded that the derivative has is uh, surjective at all points. Here we are demanding that the derivative is surjective only for those p in the level set of q. Then the claim is that f inverse q, the level set is a submanifold. of m of dimension n minus m and this will be a consequence of <coughs> again it will be a consequence of the inverse function theorem and uh, but before I go into the proof I want to in my next couple of lectures, I want to give many examples which uh, this will generate. In fact, this is the most useful way of getting hold of uh, manifolds. All right. So, let us stop here for today. Thank you.